Today we're going to be making ramen. So this is going to be a chicken ramen. Pak choy. Water chestnuts. Egg noodles. Chicken. Stock. Chinese five spice mixture. Soy sauce. Frozen defrosted cube of ginger. Shredded spring onions. Sliced spring onions. Frozen defrosted cube of garlic. Sesame oil. Salt and pepper. Three hundred milliliters of water. The equipment I'm looking to use today will be a ladle, a spatula, some tongs, and a small trivet. Now we're going to start by doing the eggs. So the eggs I'm going to be steaming separately, and these are going to be ready to go into the ramen. So the first thing we need to do is get our crock pot ready by simply adding the trivet. Adding the water. Now this is cold water. You can add hot water and it will speed up the process. And finally adding our eggs. So I'm suggesting four eggs as I believe this will be approximately four portions. So we want to close the lid, making sure it's set, set to closed and not vent. We then want to select manual, four minutes, and begin. Now that will steam the eggs in the background, and that will take care of the eggs separately so that we can cook the main dish. Now once the eggs are cooked, we're going to want to drop them straight into cold water to stop the cooking process, and this will allow them to be stored for the time it takes to make ready the ramen. So for the meantime, I'm going to place the water on the side, ready for the eggs to go straight into. Now, first of all, we want to start with the ramen. We want to start frying the chicken we will need the brown saute mode. So the Crock-Pot Express is going to come up to heat and that will begin to fry. We can then add the oil and the chicken. So we need to wait a few minutes just for the temperature to raise and be ready to add our oil and then add our chicken. Although I haven't begun cooking yet, the aroma in the kitchen is absolutely fantastic. I can smell the ginger, the garlic, the spring onions, Chinese five spice. So you'll begin to see the progress or the status bar. It's almost like a loading symbol. It's just signifying how hot the temperature is. So once it gets past the second notch, we can then add the oil. And once it gets up to the top, it means it is fully heated at full temperature. All we need to do is wait till about halfway. We can then begin adding the oil. The oil will then heat and we can then add the chicken. So we're about halfway, we're ready to go. So I'm gonna add the sesame oil. Now this is approximately three to four teaspoons. It doesn't matter too much how much oil you add. A minimum of three to four teaspoons is good, but you may need to add a glug more if you feel it's necessary. 
Sesame oil is fantastic for adding flavor. It's very, very aromatic. It's got a nutty flavor and a nutty smell, which really adds to the ambience of the dish. You'll notice immediately, as soon as I've added this to the frying pan, the smell, the aroma is coming into the air and I can smell it, it smells fantastic. So first of all, we want to add the chicken. And next, the Chinese five spice. We're now gonna use our spatula to stir. Now the chicken's partially cooked, we want to begin to add the garlic. And next, the ginger. We now want to add the salt and pepper. Chinese spice spices, one of the things that will give you the absolute aromatics and the, the, the flavours you associate with Chinese cuisine. The ingredients in five spice are ground star anise, ground cinnamon, ground fennel seeds, ground black pepper and ground cloves. And these are all combined to make one spice powder, which isn't actually spicy, but it's packed full of flavour and packed full of nutrition. The level of antioxidants in spices are extremely high, so they're very, very good for you. So the more you can add, the merrier and the better they are for you, and the more you'll benefit. Not to mention you'll notice the flavour enhancing qualities of spices, which is what gives food their absolute brilliant flavour. So now the chicken's sufficiently cooked, we can stop the browning saute process. And begin with our stock. We just want to give this a stir. And then add the stock. We also want to add our sliced onions. Our soy sauce. And our pak choy. Now we just want to give this a bit of a mix, just to combine all of the ingredients. So now we want to pressure cook. First thing we need to check is to make sure the lid is set to closed and not vent. Place the lid on the top, lock the top, and then we want manual. Ten minutes. Now, if we're using the Turbo Express, this will increase the pressure and reduce the cook time. And that will take it to six minutes. So the eggs have just finished. We can depressurize the eggs. Now there are two options here. You can either use a funnel to divert the steam or you can use a tea towel to place over the top, depending on your preference. We can now stop the top top and switch that off.
So using the tongs we can remove the eggs and place them straight into the water to stop the cooking process. As eggs continue to cook if they're remaining hot and you'll find that the runny yolk begins to solidify as they stay on the side and continue cooking. Meanwhile, we just want to peel the eggs. Now with an egg, if you strike it on a flat surface, it will allow you to break the egg and peel the shell nice and easily. And depending on how long the eggs are going to be left for, if they're going to be left for any particular period of time, we can place them back into some water. So we have approximately one minute to go on the Crock-Pot Express. Meanwhile, I'd like to explain how to cut spring onions the easy way. So here we have a spring onion cutter. It's got multiple blades, and all you have to do is place the spring onion cutter on the spring onion and draw it back. Turn the spring onion approximately 90 degrees and once again draw the cutter down the spring onion and simply slice it and that will give you lovely sprigs of spring onion perfect for garnish we're also going to be adding water chestnuts they add a fantastic crunch and a bit more nutrition to the dish so the crock pot express is now finished we can switch this off and begin to depressurize now there are two options we have for the steam. We can either use a funnel or we can place a tea towel directly over the top. If you wish to speed up the process, simply, simply lift the steam valve and place the towel back over the top. This will increase the speed at which it depressurizes. Please bear in mind the steam is very hot, so do be careful as you don't want to burn yourself. So the release valve has just opened, which means we can open the lid. It smells fantastic already. Now there are a few things we want to do next. So we need to put the ramen noodles in. and set the crock pot to saute. As we now need to boil the noodles to allow them to cook. Meanwhile, we now want to slice the eggs. And whilst we're cooking the ramen, we can place these to one side. So now the crock pot's just up to temperature and the water's boiling, we can add the water chestnuts. We just want to give the noodles a stir just to break them up, just to allow them to spread throughout the dish. Now once the noodles begin to cook, they'll start to become a bit more spongy and we can start to use the tongs to pick the noodles up and stir them. Now we have two options on the crock pot to saute or simmer. Now realistically, the saute is generally slightly hotter because it's designed for frying, but you can use that to boil if you wish to. I'm going to switch this off and change it to simmer. Isn't necessary, but it just allows it to stay at a constant temperature, a little bit lower, just keeping it on the boil. The 
main consideration is that the water is boiling and it's cooking the noodles. So either option you choose, it will achieve the same result. Now the best way to check if noodles are done is just to pull out the noodles, put them onto a plate for a moment, give them a moment to cool, and simply taste them. And you can more or less tell immediately, if a noodle needs slightly longer, then you can allow it to keep cooking. You'll feel the texture is firm and it should gradually work its way to a soft consistency. So it's been a few minutes now, just going to pull some more noodles out just to check. still a little bit on the rubbery side. So I'm just going to check the noodles once more. Now the consistency feels about right now, so I'm just about to stop the clock by express. allowing the temperature to settle slightly. So using our tongs, we can remove a good portion of noodles and place them into the bowl. And now using the ladle, we can serve the remaining. Now depending on whether you like it saucy or soupy, you can add more water if you wish to. This will change the consistency more into a soup and it all depends on your preference. So next we just want to garnish with the eggs. So let's get to tasting. Now the great thing with this is there are so many different variations in this dish. Obviously you have your eggs, your chicken, you have your onions, you have your noodles. All of the spice mixture there combines really, really well. We've added chestnuts as well, which are nice. They add an extra dimension of crunch. Just be wary that as delicious as this looks and as delicious as it tastes, it's going to be very, very hot. So you are going to have to wait just a little bit longer just to wait for it to cool. The eggs are perfectly soft. The yolks are a perfect consistency. chicken is so extremely tender and it's picked up all of the flavours of the Chinese five spice. The noodles are absolutely lovely. 
great consistency. They're soft and a little bit sticky, which is exactly how I like them. We have our water chestnuts. Absolutely perfect. Amazing crunch. Perfect bit of flavor. Also the little touch, touch of garnish with the spring onion just adds a pop of color and a layer of freshness. All in all, I'd say this is an absolutely fantastic dish. Very, very simple to make, loads of flavor, incredibly healthy. And I'd say an absolute perfect comfort food. A big bowl of noodles any day. Now we have three potential accompanying sauces you could choose from if you wish to. We have light soy sauce. I generally suggest light over dark. Light sauce is good for white and lighter meats and dark soy sauce is good for darker meats. And that will give it an umami flavor and a touch of saltiness. A dash will be more than enough. We have sweet chili. If you're a particular fan of sweet chili, then you'll generally find that this will pair quite well. My personal suggestion would be adding hoisin. It's a really, really good thing to add to a bowl of noodles. You will find that it's a slight kind of plum taste and it will give it another element of sweetness, which will make it all that tastier. So I hope you've enjoyed watching the video today. I hope you're gonna enjoy eating the food as much as I'm enjoying eating the food. And I hope you're gonna enjoy cooking the food as much as I've enjoyed cooking the food. Please subscribe and like, should you wish to receive more recipes, I can send them to you direct if you subscribe as and when they become available. See you in the next one.